Hi everyone, welcome. Today we are going to talk about correlation of the search. Next. Quantitative method. Quantitative method is a procedure that is based on the use of numbers to analyze, investigate, and verify both information and data. That is, quantitative research is a decision procedure which tries to analyze and delimit the association, the generalization, and the object of interest obtained when studying a population. The information and data that are analyzed with a quantitative method through surveys are always quantifiable with numerical samples. <coughs> the key questions of the quantitative method will be how many, how, how much, or to what extent, in order to be able to measure in degrees in different the percentage or information indicators of a sample or total cell of a population that you want to study. Next. <clears throat> Correlational research as quantitative research. <clears throat> this type of quantitative research attempts to determine the extent of a, relation of a relationship between a two or more variables using data and statics. In this type of quantitative Research the relationship between a series or of facts are searched for and interpreted. You recognize trends and patterns into the data, and you don't need to go far in your analysis to test the causes of those observed patterns. Cause and effect is not the basis of this type of research, since only the distribution of the variables are studied. They are not manipulated; they are only identified and studied as they occur in a natural environment. Now it's time to talk about correlation research more deeply. Correlation research is a type of no experimental research method in which a research measures two variables, understand and evaluate the statistical relationship between them without the influence of any French variable. This is, a, this is personally what correlational research does, make a relationship between two variables. When we refer variables, we talk about variables being the quantitative or qualitative characteristics and properties of an object or phenomenon that acquire different values. That is, they vary with respect to observation units. Correlational research looks for variables that seem to enter with each of so that when one variable changes the person when doing an investigation, we'll be clear about the way in which the other variable also change. <clears throat> there are three types of correlational research. The first is correlational research positive. A positive correlation between two variables is when an increase in one variable leads to an increase in other variable and a decrease in one variable will lead to a decrease in the other variable. <clears throat> the other is negative correlation. A negative correlation is literally the opposite of a positive correlation. This means that if there is an increase in one variable, the second variable which a decrease in vice versa. The third is no correlation. In this type of correlational research, the variables are not correlated. This means that the change in one variable does not influence the change in the other. For example, being a millionaire and happiness is not something that is correlated. This, this means that increase in a person's money does not necessarily correspond to his happiness. Move on to data collection. Okay, now we have data collection. Uh, this consists in the data files. Uh, that is another approach to correlational research. Data is the use of data files. These files are the ones that contain data that has been previously collected by doing similar research. Uh, the files are generally available to new investigators. Then we have survey application. Surveys and questionnaires are among the most common methods used for research. In this method, a random sample of participants completes a survey or questionnaire that is related to the, to the variables of interest. Random simply is a, is a vital part of ensuring the general, general stability of survey results. And the last one is natural observation. Natural observation is a form of, da of data collection in which the behavior of people is observed in the, na in the in their natural environment. Um, that is where they normally exist. 
This method is a type of peer research. It could be that an investigator is observing people in a grocery store, movie theater, school yard, cafeteria, etc. Then we have some pros and cons about correlational research. Um, uh, some of co uh, some of cons uh, about this research is uh, are, for example, that it only reveals a relationship, and it doesn't reveal which variable has the power to influence another. And the correlational research can be can be a, a very slow process. Uh, then we have some pros about this correlational research that are uh, that are allows researchers to gather much information than experiments, and the results tend to be more applicable to daily life. And another pro can be that open the landscape for future research for other scholars. Uh, now we have to uh, talk about the steps for correlational investigation. The steps are the following. Define what the problem you are going to investigate. Choose your study sample according to the needs of your research project. Select the evaluation instruments that you will use, be it online surveys, field observation, or text research. Determine what will be the steps to follow to correctly implement the process. Collect the data you need, and finally, analyze and interpret the information to make the right decisions. Next. Okay, now we have fields in which correlational research is applied. Uh, the first one is this. It is, is it, is, it is impossible to physically manipulate the variables. Imagine that a psych psychologist wishes to study the relationship between three to response measures such as intelligence and school performance. Um, intelligence is an individual characteristic, a trait that is defined based on a per performance on a standard standard test and cannot be physically manipulated. However, the relationship can be investigated in a correlational study Select, uh, selecting a group of students from a college, measuring their CI, and compare these scores with their per performance in the schools of these students. The second one is uh, con uh, consisting a hypothesis that passive smoking causes asthma in children. Mm, you cannot do an experiment to, the, to test the hypothesis it will be unethical to deliberately expose some children to passive smoking and the last one is when the ma when the manipulation of variable is illegal or unethical uh eg relationship between heroin use and number of care attacks it is unethical to administer different doses of heroin to a group of people and see whether whether or not a hair attack occurs under the most controlled condition possible. But we can select people from the population heroin, heroin addict and keep track of them for a while. And this, this, uh, this is all for us. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. See you. See you.